everybody. I'm so excited to read a book to you today. This is Miss Douthat, your principal, and I am really excited. Miss Hopkins helped me pick a brand new book to the library, and I think you're going to love it. The name of the book is Giraffe Problems, and who doesn't love a giraffe? The story is written by Jory John, and it's illustrated by Lane Smith. And here's the front cover. Look at that giraffe. My goodness. Okay. I feel bad about my neck. I do. I can't help it. Here's our sweet giraffe. <clears throat> it's too long, too bendy, too narrow, too dopey, too patterned, too stretchy, too high, too lofty, too necky. Yes, my neck is too necky. Everybody stares at it. This guy, that guy, him, her, them, whatever that is, and her again. My goodness, everybody's staring at him, he thinks. Do you think that they're staring at him? I don't know. Yeah, I feel bad about my neck. I've tried dressing it up. I've added a scarf, two scarves, a bundle of scarves, a mountain of scarves. I've tried bow ties and regular ties and both. Look at him, isn't that funny? He's put all kinds of bow ties and neckties on. I've tried hiding it away I've used shrubs, I've hung it out in ditches, I've stood behind trees, and I've spent time in the river. Other animals have necks that just work. Take a gander at this zebra's neck. Stripes always look good, so classic. And then the zebra says, quit staring at me. Or gaze upon this elephant's neck, strong and powerful yet graceful. Stop talking about me. Or glimpse this lion whose neck is adorned with a glorious mane of flowing locks. What a sight, how inspiring. Why can't I have a neck like that? Are you always this loud? The lion says. My mom always said I should be proud of my neck. She said other animals would love to have a neck like this. Yeah, right. No offense, mom, but nobody wants this neck. It's a neck only a mother could love. It all makes me want to hide until the sun sets. Sheesh, good evening. Look at that turtle. The turtle's like, wait a minute, who is this? I've been admiring your neck from afar. Oh, how I wish my neck looked like yours. I'd get so much done in a day. Goodness, I can only imagine all the reaching and grabbing and looking around I do. I'd accomplish many of my goals for sure. Meanwhile, I'm saddled with this little excuse for a neck, the turtle said. Here, watch me try to stretch it out. Ugh, the turtle couldn't stretch his neck out. See, that's about as far as it goes. Pathetic, right? I'm basically necklace. Sigh. So the giraffe is envious of the turtle's neck and the turtle is envious of the giraffe's neck. My goodness. The giraffe says, you feel bad about your neck too? Yep. Huh? I'm Cyrus, by the way. I'm Edward. It's lovely to meet you, Cyrus. Can I tell you something else, Edward? Of course, Cyrus. There they are together. The turtle said, 
There is a hill in the distance, which you can surely see from your great vantage. I've stood on that very hill for seven straight days, now staring skyward, watching as a single piece of fruit, a lone banana, slowly changed from green to yellow, ripening. I've endured windy nights and unseasonably brisk mornings with very little sleep as I waited and waited, hoping against hope that the fruit would drop before me so I could sample its sweetness and nourish myself with the process. Yet day after day, I felt like such a fool as I stretched my neck towards those greedy branches only to be limited by my own physical shortcomings. That poor turtle, he wants that banana, but he can't reach the banana. He's waiting on the banana to fall. The giraffe says, you want a banana from a tree? That's what I said, yes. Poor little turtle. Here you go, whoop. Oh, you did it, you made it look so easy. Munch, 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 munch. So the giraffe was able to get that banana for the turtle so easily. The turtle said, delectable. So that's what a banana tastes like, huh? It was worth the wait. Edward, face it, your neck is impressive. It allows you to do amazing things. For instance, you just solved my week-long banana dilemma in 10 seconds. Well, thank you, Cyrus. I think you have a swell neck too. It's elegant and dignified and it works well with your shell. That means a great deal to me, Edward. Say, do you like bow ties, Cyrus? I'm, I'm not sure, Edward. I have very little experience with them. Seems like they're becoming friends now. You look wonderful, Cyrus, as do you, Edward. Look, don't they look cute in their little bow ties? All right. I feel good about our necks, Edward. Thank you, Cyrus. For once, so do I. Yes, for once, so do I. And look at that. They've become friends and they can help each other out too. And neither of them like their neck, but each of them had a very different neck, right? And so sometimes we may have things that we might be a little embarrassed of or not sure about and other people might think that they wish that they had whatever it is so whether it's a long neck long hair short hair dark hair light hair um, be proud of who you are and be proud of yourself um, because you know you are a wonderful person and we all love you very much and sometimes other people are envious of the things, just like the giraffe was envious of the turtle and the turtle was envious of the giraffe of each other's necks. But we can all be friends and help each other out. I hope you enjoyed the book. I love this book. This was a great one and it is in our library if you'd like to check it out. Thank you. Love you guys. Begin. Hello, first grade. It's your assistant principal, Mr. Strickland. Um, the book that I chose to read for you all it's called Be You by Peter H. Reynolds. You were born to be so many things. My wish for you, no matter where your journey leads, is for you to always be you. Be ready to take that next step toward being an amazing human being. Be curious, turn every stone, ask every why, and keep digging deeply. Discover your own answers. Be adventurous, live a big life. When you are ready, step outside your comfort zone Bravely explore new paths, 
and see where they lead you. Be connected. Find kindred spirits. Be with those who make you feel like the real you. Be persistent. Keep going. Never stop. Keep going. Never stop. Keep going. Never stop. Be different. Be silly. Be quirky. Be odd. Be unique. Be weird. Be colorful. Be okay with being different. Be just the way you are. This one's very important right here, guys. Be kind. Be understanding. Help those around you to be themselves. Listen. Then listen some more. Learn more about who they are. Be brave. Try new things. Take a deep breath and plunge forward into new experiences. It gets easier every time you try. Be your own thinker. Think for yourself and set your own unique course. It isn't always easy, but you'll be heading in the, in the direction of you. Be okay being alone. Take time to be on your own. Hear your own thoughts, your inner voice, listen to your heart. Be patient. Being more you takes time. Take a deep breath, relax, let your future unfold at its own pace. It will be worth the wait. Be okay reaching out for help. When you need a helping hand, a compassionate ear, an encouraging word, reach out. As you voyage out into the world, remember, no matter what, you will always be loved. Guys, when I seen this book, it made me think of each and every one of you and how individually great that all of you are. You're doing a great job with awesome readers. Keep it up. Uh, read Across America is next week. So pick a book up and never put it down. Thanks for letting me read this book to you.